greatest event in our history is without a doubt the unification of all the Romanian historical provinces, concluded in Alba Iulia on December 1, 1918. Made possible by the victory of the Entente, the alliance between the Russian Empire, the French Third Republic and uh, Great Britain, which Romania, comprised at that time only of Wallachia and Moldavia, joined in 1916 after two years of neutrality. The December Union brought in Basarabia, Bukovina and finally Transylvania. As a result, all Romanians were united under the scepter of the Royal House of Romania and the newly unified Romania became the largest country in Central and Southeastern Europe. Like all other European states crushed by the long war, Romania found itself in an extremely difficult situation. The country was devastated by two years of heavy fighting and it came after a period of German occupation and the exile of the royal house to Moldavia, after the Bolshevik revolution haunted its borders and after considerable human and material losses. Its economy was based exclusively on agriculture, the country's treasury was forever lost to the shadows of Soviet Russia, and there was poor road, rail and maritime infrastructure. Moreover, Romania had the obligation to pay part of Austro-Hungary's war debt for the United Territories that had previously been part of the Empire. Yes, in 1918, Romania gained considerable territory and dramatically increased its population, but it also faced unprecedented challenges. A true country and a true nation, aware of its place in history, had to be built from these territories which had been artificially separated throughout the ages. The heavy burden of integrating the new territories from an administrative, institutional, legislative, financial and economic perspective fell to the political class led by the country's sovereign, King Ferdinand I. A paramount condition for the success of these tasks and the creation of a truly unitary state was for all Romanians to realize they now had a single leader whom they should follow. The solution which was put in place, the coronation of King Ferdinand I and Queen Mary. Although he had been king since the 1916 death of King Carol I, Ferdinand could not be crowned in the difficult and uncertain conditions of World War I. But after the end of the war, the coronation became a necessary political and patriotic act. It was postponed until 1922 for practical reasons, such as the place of coronation had to be carefully chosen and full of symbolism. Alba Iulia, the city where Michael the Brave achieved the first temporary union of all Romanians in 1599 and where the union of all Romanians were, was proclaimed in 1918, was thus chosen in the detriment of Bucharest, the country's capital, or Curta de Argeș, the traditional place of coronation of the voivodes of Wallachia. Still, there was a major problem. Alba Iulia only had a Catholic cathedral, where Ioan de Hunedoara, John Hunyadi, was buried. Although Ferdinand I came from a German Catholic family, he flatly refused to be crowned in a non-Orthodox church when most of his subjects were Orthodox. This was an important decision that showed Romanians the solidarity of the royal house with its subjects. It became one of the most important steps in the creation of national cohesion. As a result, with the support of the royal house, the construction of the Orthodox Cathedral of Alba Iulia began in 1921. It was almost a miracle that this jewel of Orthodox ecclesiastic art was ready in less than a year and that the coronation could take place in 1922 with all due splendor of such an event. Important events such as this one must be prepared down to the smallest detail. Exquisite costumes were specially designed for both king and queen. They were conceived in the Byzantine style by the official painter of the court, Constantin Petrescu, who also painted the interior decorations of the cathedral in Alba Iulia, including portraits of the sovereigns at the entrance of the church. He later painted the great fresco at the Romanian Athenaeum in Bucharest, the most beautiful concert hall in Romania and one of the most beautiful in Europe. Ferdinand's costume was inspired by the fashion of Romanian voivodes from the Middle Ages. The sovereign wears the steel crown of Romania made of the bronze of a Turkish cannon 
captured in 1877 during the Independence War and worn by King Car Carol I at his coronation in 1881. For Queen Mary, things were more complicated. It seems that the coronation dress was made in Paris, but the cloak, four meters long, made of blades and thread of gold, was made by Elena Niculescu Funzareanu, director of the School of Sericulture in Bucharest. On her head, the queen wears a crown, also in the Byzantine style, especially created for this event from four pounds of gold donated by a private individual from the Apusen Mountains, the richest area in gold deposits in Romania and all of Europe. Both costumes were embroidered with the coats of arms of the United Provinces and of the House of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen and Edinburgh, the personal coats of arms of the sovereigns. Both cloaks were edged with ermine. As it was customary at coronations, several medals were issued to pay homage and to fix the event in the collective memory. Although modest in terms of design and realization, one of these pieces stands out. It is a large bronze medal, measuring 5.7 inches in diameter, representing Ferdinand I and Mary. In a solemn and majestic attitude, the king sits, leaning with his left elbow on the back of the throne that bears the motto of the royal house, Nihil sine Deo, nothing without God. His right hand holds the scepter, the ultimate sign of power. His attitude is one of calm, strength and determination, all the qualities paramount to a leader. Queen Mary stands next to him with her back turned, looking over her right shoulder. She holds a lily vine that touches a pedestal, reading, crowning the sovereigns of United Romania, 1922. In the background, what one can distinguish the silhouettes of the coronation cathedral. The exerg of the medal presents the message and the homage of the queen to the nation. Through their sacrifice, the country grew greater, Mary. This medal seems to rather convey a message from the queen than from the king, and we believe that this is due to the fact that Mary was widely loved and appreciated and the more popular of the two monarchs. The fact is that throughout the dramatic events of World War I, King Ferdinand experienced moments of hesitation, indecision and even surrender. Meanwhile, Queen Mary was as steadfast as a rock, and she unconditionally supported the ideal of achieving a greater Romania with the help of the Entente. Even after the war, at the Paris Peace Conference in 1919, the Queen's advocacy in favor of the recognition of the Union in 1918 was vital. Both through official appearances and through complicated back channels, she managed to secure the support of the British Crown and of the US President Wilson. The medal was created by Kara Mihai, a Transylvanian sculptor who also designed the life-size statue of Queen Mary in full coronation attire erected in the city center of Oradia. We do not know how many copies of the medal were issued and if it was widely circulated. Most likely there had been gold copies for the monarch, silver copies for the more important guests and bronze copies for the collectors. Its large size indicates that the piece was intended either for display or embedding in various objects, such as the cover of a book or a piece of furniture, for example. We do not have much information on the piece, but it is obvious that it was made of superior bronze and presents a design worthy of a jeweler. The finesse of the details is remarkable, and the message of national unity is flawless. Three Romanian artists, Costin Petrescu, Elena Niculescu Frunzariano and Cara Mihai, contributed to a memorable and fastuous coronation act. Cohesion between subjects and sovereigns was becoming a reality. Greater Romania was already on its national and European path, forged by the sacrifice of its people and the determination of its leaders. The National History Museum of Transylvania bought the medal in 1998 from Vasile Chiorian, the biggest collector in Cluj.